General Electric. In the investing world, this is a huge story right now. If you follow the stock market at all, which I imagine many of my viewers do, you've been hearing about GE quite a bit for the past few years, but particularly for the past few months. I've been getting a ton of comments saying that I should talk about them. And I agree, I should talk about them. This is some significant stuff happening right now. Here's what I'm talking about. The Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, anyone involved in the stock market or investing knows all about this, but it's probably a little foreign to the rest of the viewers. Simply put, it's a way to indicate how the market's doing. Whenever you hear someone say the market is up or the market took a hit today, they're probably referring to the Dow. It takes 30 stocks that are considered to be good reflections of how the market is doing. Sometimes you'll see it written as the Dow 30. Well, those 30 stocks are typically big companies that you've probably heard of. Apple and Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Walmart, General Electric. General Electric was one of the original companies to be part of the Dow when it started in 1896. It was taken off for a few years early on, but starting in 1907, it spent over a century as one of these companies until June of 2018 when it was removed. It was replaced by Walgreens, and the reason it was removed is because it no longer reflects how the market is doing. Over the past few years, the market's generally been going up, while GE has rapidly been going down. While the rest of the economy does well, GE struggles. And I don't want to sound like I'm exaggerating anything, they're still being traded on the stock market, they're still one of the biggest companies out there, but they've been taken down a notch. They're still in the league, just not an all-star anymore. Here's a graph of their stock price over the past 10 years. On the left side there, at the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009, they had a really significant decline. It was during the recession and virtually all the stocks were impacted, but maybe even more so for GE. They came really close to shutting down right there. It had to do with their reliance on short-term funds, but in the end, it took the involvement of Warren Buffett and a hefty bailout from the government to get them through it. Yet. Here we are, 10 years later, and more troubles. Two years ago, they were trading for $32 per share. Today, or as of July 23rd, 2018, it's $13. Back then, their market value was $295 billion. Today, it's $113 billion. This is meaningful stuff. They've lost $182 billion in value over a two-year span. They've lost more value than they currently have. The big question on everyone's minds is whether this is the time to buy or sell. On one end, this is General Electric, typically considered to be a safe and sturdy investment. A company like that has to make a rebound, and this is the time to take advantage of an abnormally low price. And on the other end, well, just look at this. That may continue to fall, so maybe it's just smart to stay away. I don't have the answer. I'm not even interested in the answer right now. I'm interested in General Electric. Let's get away from all the investing talk for a while, because this is a historically significant business, and I just want to make sure we give them the proper respect. This is one of those companies that I'm sure you've heard of. You've likely seen their name on some light bulbs or appliances, but but if that's the only way you know them, which I think it might be, I need to fill you in a little bit. Are you familiar with a man named Thomas Edison? Of course you are. I mean, it's Thomas Edison. In 1879, he invented the light bulb. As you would expect, he soon became involved in a number of companies involved in electricity. In 1890, 11 years after his invention, all those companies merged into one called Edison General Electric Company. A couple years later, that company merged with another electric company and the resulting company was called General Electric, the very same company that's struggling today. So I'm sure that gives it a little credibility. It was formed in the 1800s and heavily involved Thomas Edison himself. Now, quite a bit happened over the next 126 years, and I would love to cover all of it in more detail sometime in the future. But today, we have a lot to get to, so I'll just say that over time, GE was one of the most innovative and inventive companies you've ever seen. 
They did start by dealing in electricity, as their name suggests, and ever since, they've been involved in seemingly everything. They've made a big and early impact in the industries of home appliances, jet engines, nuclear power, television and radio, medical devices, the list just keeps going. For example, they made the first American jet engines. And do you know the television network NBC with the voice and the Tonight Show and all of that? GE helped start it in the 1920s. They were involved in radio back then. They ended their involvement soon after starting it, but then bought it back in the 1980s only to sell it to Comcast not too long ago. And I know I'm all over the place here, but that's sort of because General Electric is all over the place. They bought and sold numerous companies throughout the years and had their hand in numerous industries. Here's what General Electric looks like today. There's so much to it because they have eight separate reporting segments, each of which is extensive and complex. The eight segments, from largest to smallest, as of the end of 2017, are power, aviation, healthcare, oil and gas, renewable energy, GE Capital, transportation, and lighting. This is very recent. It comes from their second quarter earnings report released July 20th, 2018. And we can use it to see which of these segments are doing well and which of them aren't. So the revenue from their power segment has gone down 19% when compared to the same three month period the year before. The revenue from the renewable energy segment has gone down 29%, and so on. In total, their revenue has actually gone up 3%, but none of it has made it to their profit line. Overall, their profit is down 30% compared to last year, and their biggest contributor to that is their power segment that went down 58%. This is what many people are pointing to as their biggest issue. Their largest segment just isn't doing well. And I know, that doesn't really explain what happened to GE, it just more helps isolate one of their issues. As I keep saying, this is just such a complicated subject. I usually try to provide theories as to what happened, why they've been declining, but the truth here is that there's no clear answers. I'll give you a very popular theory, but it's hard to support, and you may not be too satisfied with it. People tend to blame this guy. He was their old CEO from 2001 to 2017, and was responsible responsible for buying parts of the business and maybe paying too much for them and selling parts for maybe not enough. I think GE bought a lot, of, sold a lot of things at a, at, a, at a bad price and bought a lot of things. What is that, what is that arrogance? Thing. That was David Novak, the former CEO of Yum Brands. The idea is that they didn't make good deals, maybe became too diversified. It left them with too much debt and not enough cash available, and it just put them into a bad position. Two examples along these lines toward the end of his leadership. In 2014, GE bought Alstom Power. This is their power segment. Remember their biggest segment that's not doing so well? So that could suggest that this was a poor acquisition. In 2017, GE bought the oil giant Baker Hughes, and now they're already looking to get rid of it. On the other end, in 2016, they sold their appliance business. So that GE refrigerator that you see at the store isn't even made by GE anymore. There were just a lot of deals like this that may not have been too great for the company. In this article, Article from Bloomberg from Drake Bennett, he says a longtime GE analyst has calculated that GE's total return on these acquisitions has been half of what the company would have earned by simply investing in stock index mutual funds. So there were definitely issues during this time, but of course, if you look back before 2001, there were different issues. So I don't want to make it appear like this was all one person's fault, there's plenty of blame to go around. And as of 2017, GE has a new CEO, it's John Flannery. He recently explained GE's new plans on how to save the company. The idea is basically get smaller, which if their issue was in fact overextending themselves into bad areas, this sounds like a perfect way to fix it. Their goal over the next few years is to downsize into three core segments power, aviation, and renewable energy. As I said, they're looking to get rid of Baker Hughes now, they're looking to get rid of their light bulb business, and they've already released plans to spin off their healthcare business into a separate company. The idea behind all this is that it'll provide them with the resources they need to improve those other three segments. So to try to make an optimistic statement about the future of GE, they have new promising leadership and a plan that addresses some of their issues that will hopefully pull them out of this slump. 
Not sure if that statement was realistic or not, but it was optimistic. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about all of this? There's so much here, and it's extra difficult to try to provide explanations when we're right in the middle of it. There's people working at GE that would love to know exactly what went wrong and how to fix it, but no one has anything close to a definitive answer. I guess my intention for this video was awareness more than anything else. Awareness of what they once were and what they are today. One of the biggest companies to ever exist, they're well over 100 years old, they have ties to Thomas Edison and many big innovations throughout the years, and they're losing it. They've been sliced in half and lost their spot on the Dow and are going through some major changes. It's something that you may want to follow in the upcoming months and years. So anything you have to say about them regarding their past, present, or future, leave it in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.